Being a charter holder uh, always reminds me to act in a professional manner when it comes to independence, objectivity, knowledge of the law, participate uh, in maintaining integrity of the capital markets, perform my duties to clients, including investment analysis, recommendations, and action, perform my duties to employers, and act to the benefit of the employer and not deprive them from any skills and abilities I might have. The C-Face Charter is not only a certificate that you take, it's actually the depth and breadth of different topics in the CFA helps you tremendously in understanding the financial industry ecosystem and ultimately helping you to understand and fulfill the different needs for different stakeholders. I believe the Charter embodies the integrity dedication and advanced skills needed to build a stronger and more accountable financial career. It shows dedication, perseverance and discipline which are traits employers look for. It also introduces an element of prestige and reputation uh, and trustworthiness that is given to a charter holder by industry stakeholders and peers, which is something way beyond that goes beyond uh, sitting for exams or passing them. The CFA Charter, obviously, it's, uh, it's a big honor, it's a big, uh, it's a big brand that you want to be associated with. I mean, I, I always consider that every one of us is a brand of its own and our goal is to market our own brand. So Asher Salim alone is probably not a brand, but with the CFA, obviously, you have more credibility in the market, you have more stronger standing in the market. Uh, to me, it means commitment to the highest ethical standards and continuous learning and development. When it comes to the, the, the CFA Charter, uh, you join an elite group of investment professionals who have been through the same journey, who have spent hundreds of hours to attain the CFA Charter. You also become a part of a community of investment professionals globally, which does not differentiate between race, color, ethnic background. You all share similar values and they all have gained a lot of knowledge through going with, uh, through these three different levels of the CFA curriculum. So personally it means as an achievement, professionally it's a display that I'm professional, I'm dedicated uh, and most important of all uh, it's about that I am aware of and I very much respect and follow the code of conduct which is very much required by the investment industry. I think it just shows how committed you are especially sacrificing all of the time, all of the commitment that you had in obtaining this charter. So it means commitment, and I think it means uh, commitment more than any uh, other thing. So I think I always take CFA as a, a star on my shoulder, uh, something that I've worked hard and which I've achieved. So obviously it's, it's very dear to me. I always uh, think of that. It's a, it's a very integral part of who I am in reality. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. A dream doesn't become a reality through wishful thinking. It takes determination and hard work. It is not easy becoming a CFA charter holder, and it is not meant to just be. It is meant to define you as a leader in the investment industry. <clears throat> it requires passion for investment, dedication to a goal, and the ambition to be the best. Tonight we gather here to celebrate the outstanding achievement of attaining the most respected and globally recognized credential in the investment industry. Our program this evening includes inspiring stories from leaders of industry, recognitions to the ones who completed one of the most challenging educational endeavors. Without further ado, I would like to welcome on stage Mr. Ahmed Kurdi, the President of the CFA Society, Saudi Arabia. Welcome to CFA Society Saudi Arabia's flagship event of the year, the, C the Charter Award Ceremony, we where we take pride in celebrating the momentous and life-changing achievements of our members. 
On behalf of the Board of CFA Society Saudi Arabia, I am honored to preside over the Charter Award Ceremony for the years of 2020 and 2021. My heartiest congratulations to each and every one of you for getting through this tumultuous journey, which I am sure has been tough and rugged. This is the kind of journey that shapes you and makes you come out stronger, more determined, and more resilient. The CFA designation remains the gold standard of the investment industry. And above all, it reflects the characters of resilience, dependability, and perseverance. I am honored to welcome you to the global family of the CFA Institute. Our global community includes more than 170,000 charter holders in across 164 markets. The last couple of years have been difficult for all of us. We know it has not been easy for you and you should feel proud of your perseverance. Your resilience and dedication to earning the charter during these unprecedented times has been incredibly inspiring to all of us. This is a testament to the bright futures ahead of you. Your dedication will serve you well in the years ahead. Today, you will join CFA Society Saudi Arabia, a leading and prominent community of investment professionals. As you embark on your journey as a CFA charter holder, I encourage you all to actively engage and volunteer with the society. Our society will provide you with career resources, networking, and social events. We are thrilled to see the, the C, uh, CFA Society Saudi Arabia grow from strength to strength, being one of the fastest growing societies around the globe. Today we celebrate passing the mark of 400 members. I remember the days when we only had a handful of CFA graduates per year. Today we have around 200 CFA level 3 candidates sitting per year across the kingdom. We also have across the three levels around 2,000 candidates. That, that has, you know, as, I, as I mentioned, it has come up. You know, we have had exponential growth in the kingdom over the last uh, years. Spearheaded by the vision of uh, His Royal Highness Mohammed bin Salman and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz, the financial services industry has been thri thriving. And uh, we, we believe it will be catapulted to new frontiers as part of Vision 2030's financial sector development program. Our largest employers of our members based in Saudi Arabia are the likes of the Public Investment Fund, Aramco, Hassana, uh, and Jedwa, and the likes. This is not to be taken lightly, however. We can say that as society members, we will collectively shape the future of the investment industry in Saudi Arabia. Looking ahead, let's instill a sense of purpose as we lead our careers. Let's always embody CFA, CFA Institute's mission, which is to lead the investment, pro, uh, investment profession by promoting the highest standards of ethics, education and professional excellence for the ultimate benefit of society. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to address you all today. And again, my heart is con congratulations to every one of you. Please join me in congratulating uh, everyone here. We have today around 78 uh, ch new chapter holders. So congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you, Ahmed. It gives us so much pride to witness the growth and development of our society. To further highlight these achievements, our next speaker this evening is one of our most well-known members, Mr. Abdelatif Saif, who is currently the founder and CEO and executive director of Sabine Investment Company. Previously, Mr. Saif was the CEO of Arida Investment Company, the investment arm of the Saudi Public Pension Agency. He has more than 21 years of experience in investment and finance and is a board member of several Saudi companies. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Abdel Latif to the stage. Assalamu alaikum. CFA charter holders, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be here today with you and to share with you this happy occasion. New CFA charter holders, congratulations on achieving this prestigious and special milestone. Well done. 
I know that you have gone through a lot to get here. You sacrificed your time and energy through the last few years in order to get to where you are today. I know that there were many stressful times, but alhamdulillah, today is for you to celebrate what you have achieved. Not to ruin your evening tonight, but I just want to remind you that this is only the beginning of your long journey. And inshallah, it will be a successful one with the CFA designation. There is much more to achieve, and the charter will be there to support you, to give you the tools and knowledge necessary to uh, achieve, inshallah, what you aspire to achieve. Of course, there is much more to do, continuous development, hard work, that you need to have in order to reach your potential. I remember when I got the charter holder back in 2008, a colleague of mine asked me, what do I aspire to be? And at that time, I said, I want to be a CIO of my own company. He looked at me and said, how? And I told him, to be honest, it's still in the planning phase. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I'm going to get there, inshallah. 14 years later, four, job leads, four jobs later, alhamdulillah, I am here and I've established Sabreen Investment Company with great partners, alhamdulillah. Looking at these long 14 years, obviously I've gone through many challenges, surprises, detours, and uncertainties in my career. I cannot tell you that it was smooth sailing. Obviously, you go through a lot, but it's a question of how do you navigate your journey. Uh, I, uh, of course, now that I started my own business, I understand it's not the end too. Probably I'll be spending the next 20 years, inshallah, to make it successful. So the continuous hard work needs to be with you along your journey. Not only did the designation help me in getting the tools and knowledge necessary to excel in this ever-changing and complex industry, but also gave me, through the society, the network needed to transition through my career. It gave me the credibility in front of others. So really, it helped us get through life through the network that we have. Alhamdulillah, I'm happy to see and hear Ahmed tell us about the great society that has been built and, the, and more to come. I don't wanna make it a long speech. I know it, uh, it's been delayed, so, so I'll try to make it brief and uh, inshallah uh, sweet. But uh, I thought I might give you some of the lessons I've learned through my journey in, in order inshallah to maybe find something useful within it for yourselves. First of all, you need to determine today, what is your long-term objective? Ask yourself, what is your mission? What do you want to achieve? You have to see basically yourself when you're retiring and ask yourself, have you accomplished what you accomplished? Are you satisfied with what you've done? That's really the first step. For me, it was really creating my own asset management business. To help identify your long-term objective, one has to ask himself, what is he good at? And what is he passionate about? Because if you are good at something, but you're not passionate about it, unfortunately, you're not gonna give it your 100%. At the same time, if you are passionate about something, but you're not good at it, it's more of a hobby. You are not gonna excel in it. So you need to identify what are you good at and are you passionate about it? I truly enjoy what I'm doing. And therefore, all my life is around what I do. I spend my time and energy focused on my work, and that supported me in getting where I am today. Of course, I've had my share of failures, and you too will face some challenges throughout your career, and it's okay to fail. What's not okay is not learning from your failures, or not picking up yourself after a failure and moving on and continuing your journey. By the way, if you don't fail, that means basically that you don't have a, a, a high aspiration or tough targets. You're not that ambitious. Maybe the bar is too low. So try to challenge yourself and don't be afraid of failing. Failing is part of the process. Uh, I've been stuck in different roles in the past where I thought, I am stuck, I'm at a crossroad, what do I do? But of course, I go back to ask myself, why am I stuck? What am I not doing right? And that helped me figure out my next moves. And of course, I had to be patient, and I give time to whatever challenge I am facing, and not rush to resolve it. You have to choose 
when to act. It's as important as the action itself. A very important thing is be ready to pivot. Life doesn't always go in the direction you want or you predict. Embrace changes, it's part of life, and you have to continuously reassess the environment you are in and modify your plan accordingly. Personally, I was ready to start my venture some time ago, but the timing wasn't right for various reasons. So the plans changed and they got delayed. Alhamdulillah, in 2020, the timing was right. I was fortunate to find the right team and I started Sabine Investment Company. Another thing, be humble. Never think that you know everything. Uh, if you are 100% certain of something, make sure that you are not missing something else. It's always that unknown that will cost you. I always respect other people's opinion and I try to understand where, where they are coming from. When I'm confident, I always ask myself, what am I missing? There is, must be something I am overlooking. A very important aspect too is don't be greedy, share your successes. If you work with others, you will achieve your goals faster. Remind yourself that a bigger pie and a better pie for all is better than a small pie and a bad pie for yourself alone. So try to work with others. I know sometimes it is difficult to work with others or you believe that they're dragging you or holding you back, but trust me, over time, you will accomplish much more when you're working with teams. Finally, you have to give in order to get. You are part now of this amazing society, the CFA society, which will enable you and provide you with everything you need to navigate your career. So give it whatever you can to make it better. Serve on the CFA board society at board if you can, attend the events, volunteer in the projects that are there, and the more we give, the stronger we will be all together. Once again, congratulations on your amazing achievement and welcome to the club. I look forward to working and interacting with you all. Enjoy your evening. Such an inspiring leader. Thank you, Abdel Latif, for being here with us and your continued support to the society. Next, we have our new recipient of uh, his charter, uh, Mr. Mazen Sudeiri, who will be representing and speaking on behalf of all of you today. Please welcome, please um, come to the stage. And I can't see where you are, to be honest. Oh, here. <laughs> so Mazen is the head of research at Arrajhi Capital. Thank you for this honor to represent the new CFA chart holder. I might be the oldest candidate for this year in Saudi Arabia, but this is never too late. Learning is a non stop process, learning is for lifetime. Over the last three decades, the global economy has witnessed stellar growth, and among the key factors that have made the growth possible include innovation and credibility and creativity. All of what we think we know or that we have achieved might be less significant. If we did not update ourselves on a regular basis as such, it goes without saying that learning is a continuous process. During my CFA journey, I discovered my flaws. I worked in developing ideas and opinions while managing the most valuable commodity in life, time. Which is, this journey has helped me to change in a meaning, uh, meaningful way, as it has helped me gaining a new perspective on how important it is to not just work hard, but also maintain the highest level of integrity. As such, you must always strive to bring in positive changes and work hard to achieve the goals you have set for yourself while maintaining ethical conduct. Let me illustrate this with a small example. It has 14 years I have been, I have been working in this industry, and I have always observed that CFA chart holders are treated with respect and trust. What confirmed this to me was that years ago, Mr. Bernie Madoff, who was the star of Wall Street, who was arrested for his obvious fruit in the financial market. Nobody had raised a red flag about him. On the other hand, Harry 
Mar uh, Marco Polos, a CFA chart holder who spoke with confidence that was backed with knowledge, experience, and most importantly, ethics. For that moment, from that moment, I realized that not only knowledge, but also deeply ingrained ethical values are vital in investment profession. While the knowledge could have helped Harry spot the irregularity, it was, it was his, ethic, his ethical inclination that provide him the necessary courage to go against all odds and fight for justice. He truly helped to enhancing the integrity of the market and introduce a level playing field which was much needed for all the market participants at that time. While he was a remarkable personality with various uh, viable traits, I believe the most valuable attribute was his insistency to pursue ethic. Harry spoke at a time when no one gave him a platform, raised a concern, neither investment community nor regulator listened to him. In the, in the meantime, the asset under management for Harry Madoff had reached $50 billion. But with time, knowledge won. The truth prevailed and it appeared that Marco Polos was right. So today, the CFA program is one of our top choices for getting the path for enhancing the knowledge and improving our professionalism. It is undoubtable that, that the gateway for being integrated with the global intellectual society, which looks forward to individuals who can help to build a strong investor community, community and bring prosperity. However, while pursuing these goals, one must not compromise on the most cardinal values, which are ethics and integrity. And since you all choose, you all choose this path, I wish you all good luck. There is never enough knowledge and learning that one can pursue, but without ethics, all knowledge amassed over these years is all vain. I hope you all, I hope all you make it, you make, I hope all of you make a note of this. And there is no Bernie Madoff between us tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mazen. Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. Our next speaker is the embodiment of inspiration determination, and hope. Please join me and welcome Walid al Hussein to the stage. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Those were some amazing speeches delivered by the guests. I would be very happy if I could do even 10% as good as they did. So again, once of all, uh, thank you everyone for attending this event. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ahmed Al-Kurdi and Abdul Aziz al especially for giving me the chance to speak. I would like to share my very uh, unique and interesting story with, with the world. Mine is a story of relentless determination and strong willpower. I show off passion, patience, and perseverance. A story that reminds us all that whatever we can dream, we can achieve. My story is so special because I'm special. I'm a VIP, but not really. I'm actually a special person because I have special needs. I need to go to the hospital every three weeks and take in blood in order to be alive. That's because my body doesn't produce my red blood cells because I was born with a serious blood disorder called thalassemia major. As you can see in the picture, I'm studying for the CAT exam while having a blood transfusion. I'm sure none of the rest of the candidates have to go through such experience. While embarking on this highly rewarding CFA journey, it wasn't a level playing field for me to begin with. I was at unfair, significant disadvantage from the beginning. In addition to worrying about 
uh, studying after exhaustive work, office hours, you know, waking up early in the weekends for long study sessions, and uh, sacrificing family events, and uh, getting socially boycotted by friends, I also had to worry about getting blood transfusions, doctor's appointments, endless hospital visits, and an eight hourly injection that I must take daily. I really had to push myself really hard when my blood levels were low. I really had to study while enduring enormous amount of fatigue in my body. Still, Alhamdulillah, I did it. Ladies and gentlemen, this story is not to sadden you all. Cheer up. This story is actually to motivate and uplift everyone here that with strong determination and willpower and with a positive mindset, we can surmount any challenge in the world. We can get achieve any goal we aim for. When life throws mangoes at you, you make a milkshake. When I was young, I remember some doctors and uh, this is like 36 years ago, some doctors and people used to say that I might not live past the age of 18. Well, to all of them I say this, here I am, standing tall, alive, real, receiving the CFA charter, perhaps the first patient in the world to do so. So brothers and sisters, don't let anyone, any doctor tell you how long you're going to live. Don't let anyone tell you what you cannot do. Don't let anyone undermine your abilities. Tawakkal to Allah and believe in yourself. Do your best, give your best. Now that CFA exams are done, I'm very happy that I no longer have to worry about fixed income and derivative and all those uh, nightmares just before the exam day that I'm running out of time in the morning AM exam session. I know the CFA charter holders, there is no what I'm saying. I became interested in CFA program when I first met CFA charter holders at Masik. Coincidentally, our honorable chief guest, Mr. Abdul Latif al Sab, was one of them. I was highly impressed by the level of knowledge, the breadth and depth of investment knowledge the CFA Institute had, CFA program had instilled in them. CFA program, it really empowers you with a well-rounded investment experience, investment knowledge that enables you to make well thought out investment decisions. Given my highly rewarding experience from CFA program, I would definitely encourage the students to pursue it. And if I can do it, you can do it. Finally, on this occasion, I would like to thank those without whose support, it would never have been possible for me to achieve success, such an endeavor. First and foremost, my parents, my mother, my father, my dear wife, and my family, my office colleagues, Mr. Rizwan Rana and Asif Sima, which in the crowd, they're supposed to be cheering for me, but they're not. My mentors, His Excellency Abdurrahman al Zoghaili, Deputy Minister at Ministry of Environment, Water and Agriculture, and a long term boss and friend, at least that's what I think about him, Umar Basal, who has been a long, very active member of the CFA Society. I'm originally from Pakistan, a fighting nation, but I must say, I'm very, I would really like to thank this country. Saudi Arabia, where I was born, that played a huge part in making such a patient successful that no other patient in the world has done. I'm really thankful for this country, for nurturing and nourishing me, and for giving me everything I have. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. story humbles us all. Now the part each new CFA charter holder has, has, has been waiting for. We would like to welcome on stage once again the president of the CFA Society of Saudi Arabia, Mr. Ahmed Kurdi, and our guest of honor, Mr. Abdel Latif Saif, uh, to present the new CFA uh, recipients with their charter.
To everyone else, I will be calling your name. When you hear your name, please make your way up to the stage. <coughs> Abdulaziz Bari. Abdelaziz Al Ayed. Abdelgadir Bagadir. Abdullah Mheza. عبد الرحمن العوضي ماجان we have his charter we we'll give it to him later Abir bin Saleh. Ali Bassami. Okay. Anthony Abu Nader.
فيصل السويد فيصل البريدي فراس الصغير حمد الحماد هشام عيدو ابراهيم المهنة ابراهيم السحباني ابراهيم عطيه إياد غلام جاد أبو نادر خالد الغامدي
Naja the Sonnet. Majid al Bahlan. Mazen Asadeh. مؤيد الحزن محمد الحمدان محمد اثنية محمد الهوشا محمد نزار المدار محمد الرشيد
محمد المحيسن معاذ النصار مصعب هندي نجود العجلان نياز أحمد عمر الزبن Pronouncing the names سوريانا الحقيق صالح المطيري او موجود اوكي صالح المطيري سامر الدحلاوي شهروخ شهزار سيد اختار
Suhair al Tamimi. Tahir Asayir. Turkey Let Abi. Walid Hussain. Before we, we move on, is there anyone who's a charter holder today that we did not call his name out or her name out? <laughs> Please come to the stage. Chama. Mohammed Abu Talib. Ali Abu Raha. Thank you. 
Okay. Raed bin Khair. Hamad al Gabi. A warm and well-deserved congratulations to each and every one of you tonight. I would like to take an opportunity and a moment to touch upon the Saudi Capital Market Awards taking place this, later this month. As you may be aware that the CFA Saudi uh, Society has taken an active role in developing the awards for Tadawa. In 2022, we created three awards categories and created the governance structure for them. And in 2022, we're happy to announce that we have expanded it to nine awards. It's amazing to see what a, a, a volunteer-led organization is capable of doing. We have all shared experiences here, although each is different. The, com the communality of determination, dedication, and passion we all share makes us a community. The greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. We all accept the challenges, that challenges are part of life, especially in career. Many studies showed that coaching and mentorship supports career development tremendously. Recognizing the importance of this, CFA Society Saudi Arabia is happy to announce the launch of its mentorship program, Qidwa. Qidwa is derived from the Arabic word role model. So the program is designed to pair candidates and charter holders or members that are best suited to realize their full potential and to ensure success for the individual as they achieve their professional goals together. Stay tuned for communication from the, from the society um, and we would love to have you as a mentor, a mentee, or even just a volunteer in our Qidwa program. From experience, there's nothing more fulfilling than being part of the community, the wonderful community that we have here. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our volunteers, especially our board, and uh, our society staff and volunteers of our members and candidates that make everything we do here possible. And I'm going to encourage you all to get to know each other, connect with each other, network with each other, attend our events. We have networking events. Our, our society is quite active now after being... Um, uh, I don't want to use the word disabled, but we really did feel um, that we didn't have our uh, connection with our members and candidates. But now we are back and we are happy to be back and we are happy to see you all. And um, I would like to call every single charter holder to the stage again because we want to take a group photo. And um, that's all from us for this evening. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much.
uh, guys, a small note about the certifications. Any mistake in naming or that would be corrected in minutes after we finish the main event. Please uh, go back to us after we finish. <laughs>